Welcome back everyone to Roofing Insights, Dmitry Lipinski and today I'm sitting here with the Roofer Brothers, Matt and Elias. So who is Matt, who is Elias? I'm Elias. Matt, Elias. <laughs> Sounds good. The Roofing Twins. Roofing Twins, so excited about this interview. I know you have an amazing story. I want to go as early as you comfortable. First question, I have uh, two sets of twin sisters in my family. Oh wow, nice. Like two sets, like they're about 18 years apart. And the older one, actually identical twins, just like you are. And I know, like well, I remember- He's identical, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember, have you ever uh, claimed to be other person when you did something bad? Yeah. You know, we never did that, but one thing we are going to do is I'm going to fly on his card. <laughs> We're going to, I'm going to buy the flight and he's going to fly on me or I'm going to fly on him. Just to do it, eh? Just to do it, yeah. You're roofing brothers, you're roofing twin brothers. Take me back as early as you want, like start telling your story. How did you end up doing what you're doing and what, like, how, how you all came about? Well, I think, uh, you know, looking back um, as an entrepreneur, I see those traits way back. Okay. Maybe even some leadership traits way back where I didn't realize we always had kids that would just kind of follow us, you know. And I can tell you, we, we left, we grew up in an Amish culture. Okay. And when we so went Amish? To, we are not anymore, uh -huh. but we grew up Amish. And when we went to leave the, the Amish culture, I mean, we were 19 years old, the preachers literally showed up. And, and hey, guys, if you're watching this, but the <laughs> preachers literally showed up and they said, don't leave because if you guys leave, we're going to lose a lot of people because you're so influential, you know. Is that what happened? Yeah, actually, a lot of them have left, yeah. So um, even though it's an amazing culture, there's, there's reasons that, you know, that we made a choice. So, but looking back, when we were 12 years old, we would, like, um, get wood, and we would make fishing lures, put hooks in them, paint them up real nice, take them down to the pond, and we'd catch big bass with them. And then we would go show people the pictures of those fish, and we would say, you know, look at what I caught with the lure I made. And people were like, hold it, you caught that big one with the lure you made? I want one, and, and they, would, they would put little orders in. And, awesome. you know, just looking back there, you see some of those traits. How did you get in the roofing community? So my dad, my dad was a contractor from the time. He's dead too? Yeah. Or just yours? So yeah, we have the same dad. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Twins, obviously, <laughs> makes sense, right? So my dad was a contractor. Um, and, you know, growing up Amish, when you come out of school, it's like, you know, it's the real world. We worked with my dad, you know, doing whatever we had to do. And we, we did anything from hanging siding to shingles to metal to whatever we could get our hands on. And so we kind of got an early start on that. Well, when we left the Amish community, I guess, I mean, they don't tell you you have to, I guess, but it's pretty much a known thing that you have to move out of the area because, you know, it's just, you know, I guess it's looked at as you're a bad influence or something and you're pretty much asked to leave the area. And so we ended up picking up and moving to Pennsylvania. So we started working for a guy in Pennsylvania that did the same thing my dad did. Uh, my dad got into a different trade. Long story short, that's how we got started in the commercial industry is the guy that we were working for. He was residential, but then he started going into commercial. And after several years there with him, he basically told us, if you guys want to go on your own, I'll help you get started. And that's kind of our start into the commercial industry. How did uh, Conklin all came about? I see you guys all the time. I think somebody even tried to pitch me over the phone. No, I really? Know which one of you no, really? called me. But yeah, like uh, I've se I see you everywhere in communities. I see Thanks you in to the social media. Yep, yep, yep. So w what's Conklin? How, like, how did you come up with the idea? What's behind it? You know, well, I hear you have a conference in two weeks coming up. Yeah. Um, Conklin Roofing Systems. Conklin is a liquid products manufacturing company okay. out of Shakopee, Minnesota. And Conklin Roofing oh, Systems. That's where I'm from. Okay, yeah. Really? They're right in Shakopee. And um, their roofing systems are in the world of liquid applied systems. Um, they're just a unique system that, you know, with a small crew, you can go out and do big projects. I mean, we do projects that are a thousand square feet. This year we had two different projects in our team that were done that were 13 acres. Well, so that's a big roof, you know, and being able to take four or five guys and do projects like that um, in the commercial world, it's appealing to a lot of guys. Awesome. And it's an easy way to, to transition into commercial. An easy way, that, easy way to describe our systems really is, you know, most conventional systems, you're tearing off the old roof and putting down a new roof. And if you take a traditional rubber, you take a traditional membrane, the problem wasn't the rubber, the problem wasn't the membrane as a whole, the problem is almost always the seams. In commercial, that's normally the problem. Mm -hmm. Well, we could tear it off. We have some membranes as well. We could tear it off and put one of our membranes back down. But the reality is it's kind of like buying 10 tarps, gluing them together, and hoping the glue holds. And that's what, that's what happens a ton out there. Well, our systems allows us to basically, I like to look at it this way, buy the products in the pre-manufactured state. Because at some point in time, every product out there, every membrane out there was liquid. 
before it was manufactured. So we buy it in the liquid form and we take it out to the project and we manufacture it on the roof and it allows us to build a seamless membrane over that rubber. It allows us to build a seamless membrane over those old tar roofs, or over those low metal. slope metal roofs, whatever it is. And for that reason, it's just a win-win for the contractor because it's a faster solution than tear-offs and it's a win-win for the building owner because it saves him a lot of money. He doesn't have to help fill the landfill. In most cases, you know, they can save their roof rather than tearing it off and we've just built a business around that. How about insurance claims? Do insurances like We it? have done, this year our team did right at $50 million worth of projects and I would dare to say that there wasn't a million dollar worth of claims in there. It's all retail and we just train sure. our guys on how to go out and be the best salesmen out there. Awesome. Try to be the best salesman. So yeah. what business, you, do you still have a roofing business? Do you still install My, it or are you just manufacturing right we, now? We just rep the product line right now and work with our team. My, um, our two younger brothers took our roofing business on and they literally run the company. And we, awesome. I mean, we do a little consulting there, but not Are there much. twins too? No, they're not twins. Interesting fact is we married sisters, so that gets confusing. Yeah. Anyway, back on track. Interesting. So I have to ask this question. I, uh, I recently have seen a series on Amazon Prime about it called Amish Mafia. Yeah, yeah. You've seen that? Oh yeah. Is it true? Is it I like, know some of those it, kids. Oh, uh, it's all fake. Is it all, f it's is all it? fake? Really? The guys aren't fake, but it's all fake. <laughs> it's all based around some. So, so what's his name? What, what's his name? The big guy, like um, Lebanon Levi. Le Le Levi, like you know him? I know. I don't know. Him. I know. I, a, he's, I, so he's not Amish, but he's no. trying to. He grew up Amish. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, those kids all grew up Amish. I know. A I guy just that, ran into one they, guy at Home Depot recently. That's on really? the show. Yeah, he lives in our area. I know a guy that used to be neighbors with him. Yeah. Wow. We used to have. There was another show. But called, there's nothing like what was the that. Amish what was that mafia. other? What was that other show called? Uh, there was another Amish show just before the Amish Mafia. What was it called? Breaking Amish. Breaking Amish. Um, I knew, I knew of some of the people on there. We had a guy work for us for a while. That was a technically a brother-in-law, ex-brother-in-law, to some of the people on that show. What about your conference? I really want to like know what's that about. Is, um, we do an annual roofing seminar for okay. our team. Okay. Um, and I mean it's open for guests as well if they want to come in and check it out, but. It's a day, this is our sixth year that we're doing this conference. It's a day we just pull all our team together. Last year we had about 300 guys from, I think, 21 different states there. And we put our best guys, our top contractors in the room, and just do trainings. Um, we do anything awesome. from personality trainings to sales trainings. What's personality to training? Different I mean, personality types of different people and when you can recognize them. And just to explain it really, really simple, if I wear my personality on my sleeve and you're going to try to sell something to me and you're going to wear yours on your sleeve, we're gonna get along much better. But if you're like really How reserved, would you sell me? Um, what kind of personality? I, you, you have what I would call the accountant type personality where I would have to show you figures and numbers. You know, I dot would, need, the I's to, and cross I would the need to dot my I's and cross my T's and show you why it would benefit you. And here is, you know, all the history of the company. Here's why we're a better product, all this. If you would try to accountant sell- personality. If you would try to sell my personality, you would just show me before and after pictures. This is before, this is after. When you try to show me all the numbers and all the letters and read the fine print, I'm not gonna do that. I just wanna, I don't want, don't tell me about the, the labor pains, just show me the baby. Awesome. That's my personality type. Well, and so when you can recognize those in people and literally just match them. Um, people, here's what you, people, you people tend sales. to do, uh, people in sales tend to speak their own personality and so they only make sense to the people that are their personality. Are like them. Sure. And so if you can learn, and there's lots of little things that will, that you can literally walk in in a room and within a couple minutes you can pick up a really good idea of what, what, what personality that person is. Where did you get this is. from? Like, is it, did you we, follow somebody? No, or? we were really frustrated because our first two years we got 30 to 40% of the jobs we bid on because it's all retail. So it's me selling my own product to a building owner that's got to pay me. And we, it didn't help that we looked like we're 17 years old and they would say, can you bring your boss out? And we're like, oh, this is the top of the chain here. <laughs> But um, we were frustrated because that's 50, 60% of the time you're out there, you're deadheading. And so it's frustrating. That's fuel, that's time. Yep. And so we took a, um, we went and took a sales training that it was a six day course. Mm -hmm. um, it was three days and then it was a follow up and then it was another three days. And we literally came out of that sales training. It was all about relationships and communication. And when you can get better in relationships and communication, not only does your business thrive better, but your marriage gets better. You're able to relate to your friends better. Just everything. I remember sitting in that training going, I need that. I nudged my wife and I said, I thought this is about sales. They're up there talking about relationships. Because if you suck in your marriage, you're probably going to suck in other places in your life. 
Absolutely. What's the most important? Your marriage is more important than your business. You can make a million dollars in your business or $10 million in your business, and when you come home and your wife leaves you, that's no way to live. And so all this sinks together. I agree 100%. Well, thank you so much for sharing your stories. It was a pleasure meeting you guys. Nice meeting you. Good meeting yeah. you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.